So that's what I'm saying. I, the text is like an object. It's going to change perspective based on where you're standing. I don't know. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I missed you, baby sweet. It was a day. Hmm. It was a day. Please tell me you're seeing this too. From Seattle, we are drinking the movies. I'm Taylor Baker. And I'm Michael Clausen. That's a delicious a beer. beer. This Very is good. our uh, our first beer from outside the country. It's coming straight to us from Bavaria. Mm. The city of Friesen. They know what they're doing. It's a Bierreich Stop Brewery by Hesch Stefan Half of Weissbier. How many German listeners did we just lose with all that pronunciation? <laughs> Roughly all of them. Make good beer. But I, I did well do done. my best. <laughs> it's delicious. Great pick. Oh. oh. All right. Well, I guess we could turn the mic off because I just want to drink this and uh, hang out. You want to just, you want to just drink today? <laughs> yeah, let's no just movies? drink and hang out. <laughs> Maybe watch a movie instead. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds much easier. <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about some fictional titles later. But first we're going to do a first impression on the film The Hustle starring Anne Hathaway mm. and Rebel Wilson. It is a comedy oh. coming out this spring. I have heard about it. I don't know much, though. Well, let's get ready to laugh, hopefully. Let's do it. Penny. Why are women better suited to the calm than men? Because we're used to faking it. Because no man will ever believe a woman is smarter than he is. Is it valuable? $500,000. I like it because it's shiny. All right, we just watched the trailer for The Hustle, starring Rebel Wilson and Anne Hathaway. What'd you think? I thought, this seems oddly familiar. What's that damn movie I saw with Michael Caine and Steve Martin? Oh yeah, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. This is oh. basically Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, the girl version, and it's awesome. I've never seen that movie. I'm Anne not Hathaway even familiar with, with it. with a British accent, plays Michael Caine's role, and Rebel Wilson is playing Steve Martin's role uh, as an Australian. Mm -hmm. Well, she is Australian, but she's playing an American, it seems. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a particularly good movie, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Mm. It has a lot of stretches that are very thin you can feel steve martin's exhaustion mm. at his own stardom mm. um and the roles but there are moments of genius that we later see repeated in like austin powers where austin mm. will jump into bushes oh, that yeah. is kind of directly taken from the beginning of dirty rotten scoundrels when uh. Uh, i i think it's steve martin but it could even be michael Caine. just like disappears by jumping into bushes off of a porch oh i like that tact mysterious to allure the women that's a nice touch. I like it. Yeah, I have not seen that. Uh, I think it looks like good fun. Uh, I like both those actresses. Um, I don't know that I giggled quite as hard as I might have hoped given who's in it, but it looks like they're having fun, which means I will likely have fun. That it, always helps. It looks like a solid um, like two and a half. Like a yeah. Like even though it's going to be heart. a fifty, I'm going to have the heart for it. Like I'm going to enjoy Definitely. the experience. It's not the game night of the year. I would agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I am interested in seeing Anne Hathaway flex more of her comic chops. Yeah. Um, I thought she was funny in, uh, Ocean's 13, Eight. right? Or, yeah, I'm going, I'm going the wrong yeah. direction. Um. It's okay, Soderbergh yeah. can cloud anybody. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm eager to see, you know, what she's got up her sleeve here. Um, good duo. I think they'll be fun. I do too. I'm, I'm looking forward to the spring already. Yes, indeed. Classic spring release. Let's uh, get to Octavia Spencer's new film, Ma. Let's do it. There's something off about Ma. Seriously? She's homeless. And her basement's pretty much the best drinking spot in town. We can't go up there. Shh. Oh. What the hell? Thanks for these earrings. What happened last night? That's the trailer for Octavia Spencer's Ma. Wow. I am very excited for this. I knew very little. Uh, I would not have guessed that uh, this was w what it is, given that Octav Octavia Spencer is in it. When I think of her, I think about sort of like prestige pictures, like... The Help or... Hidden Shape Figures. Yes. I think she's played, you know, the maid to a white person like three times or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, what a great role for her. This looks kind of funny. There's definitely like some humorousness to this, right? Oh, 100%. Um, 
Okay, it's not just me. It's straddling <laughs> Awesome, The Green Room, and um, shoot, what's that? There's another movie that I was thinking of that mm. this tightly resembles. It's like, yeah, it, it's in three places at once, but it's also totally its own thing. Yeah, um, it's definitely the Bloom House production company trying to capitalize on Jordan Peele's success with African American mm-hmm. horror. Yeah, yeah, but it's so much deeper and more exciting than that. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I don't, I don't know that I'm sensing any sort of like greater. Um, you know, political resonance or thematic resonance here. This kind of looks it like in a good way, kind of a straight kind of genre exercise. Yes. Unless there's there certainly could be a surprise. Well, I think of some they are kind, checking but... some boxes when we see a, a African American high school boy's face painted white. Mm, yes. Or that, that we could see be interesting. The, uh, I, what appears to be Octavia Spencer brandishing a Afrikaansa mask mm, yeah, in front of yeah. her face. Yeah, yeah, certainly, yeah, yeah, some some interesting little cultural Yeah, and, and then it sure. seems to be yeah. some callbacks, like, I, I don't want to go too far, but there does seem to be callbacks in the trailer with the parents of the children that are coming to her house to party, mm. yeah. that um, there is a, a deep well of history in their mm. high school experience, and yeah. that she's getting revenge. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. So. Oh, very astute, I like that. Yeah, uh, did you see a release date for this? I did not, but I have to assume it's spring because yeah. that was a full length official yeah. trailer. So yeah, it's coming hot. Yeah, with I mean I think Us comes out in like March, mm-hmm. so it could be a good kind of one-two punch. It could, yeah. Blumhouse, Blumhouse like is doing some good work after uh, that misstep with Halloween. I haven't oh, yeah, seen Happy yeah. Death Day to you yet, but I'm That's going right. to. Good, uh, good option. Good pick. All right. Well, we're both excited to see this one, and you should be too. So look at the trailer. Do it. Ooh, now mm. we got to talk about movies. We do. In fact, we watched these movies quite some time ago, so I don't even remember what exactly those movies are. That's uh, right. Piercing. It's been over like a week, I think, for at least all of these. Longer it, than that. In, at in... least. Yeah, two weeks in the case of Destroyer. Yeah. Fortunately, that one has lingered with me. Um, yeah, I've actually been... I've been drawn back to that almost more than any other quote-unquote 2018 film. Oh, interesting. Um, and just thinking about it. Mm. So that, that'll be fun to talk that about. Let's let's wait for that, though, because that will yes. be the longer discussion. Nice. Building us. suspense. Yeah, let's do, like some, uh, let's do some Christopher Abbott talk with uh, Piercing, which I am very certain is a film you liked more than me, but that we each found strong artistic merit in. The victim has to be a prostitute. Your guess is on the way up. Thank you. The first step is to get her tied up and gagged. She'll probably try to run and scream. Is everything all right, sir? Everything's fine. You could still kill her. What? (laughs) Yeah, I think I would agree. I think the director's name is Nicholas Pesci. I think it's how you pronounce his last name. P-E-S-C-E. Um... Uh, I really liked his last movie, which was called The Eyes of My Mother, which is a horror film, oh, black Netflix, and white movie. Correct. Um, it could be on Netflix by now. I don't think oh, it was maybe a Netflix I'm thinking original. Of, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of a different one. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Um, which I found uh, very chilling and very effective. Um, so I had, I had pretty high hopes for piercing, um, and it m- most definitely did not meet them. But I think I'm still, overall mildly positive on it um yeah you mentioned christopher abbott um we've talked before about how we both very much believe in christopher abbott very much uh see his talent the uh he he is the counterpoint to tom hardy in my head personally Mm. like is it tom hardy gets prestige pictures and is Mm. widely recognized as great to me christopher abbott is great but is Mm. not recognized Mm-hmm. in the same sphere so the work that he's doing is going unnoticed i agree i think he's very underestimated um, and his projects unfortunately reflect that I, yeah. I would say yeah definitely um yeah i gave it a three out of five would you give it I don't remember. two two okay you're lower yeah, yeah it, it really always comes down to that debate of like is it really a 44 and not a 46 ah. right because that's where the two and a half lives and yeah. it really is a 44 for me mm. just the I don't think that short stories 
are always the best suited thing for a feature film adaption. And that is certainly Mm. the case here. I wouldn't say that they're not suited for visual adaption. I think Mm. that it might really be suited to visual adaption, but the, it it almost seems like they made it last too long at an hour and Mm. 20 minutes, I think is how long it ran, maybe an hour 17. I could see it being 45 minutes and a whole lot tighter. Mm. Um, They gave me almost too much time lingering with Mia Wasikowska. Mm. Um, Too many callbacks to the, um, the wife um Mm. too much time spent on the baby i think that whatever made that short story really good and atmospheric and psychological Mm. is not what would make a good short film about Mm. the subject so i think that more Mm. editing needed to take place in the story Mm. just tighten it up yeah yeah i mean it did feel pretty cinematic to me i think what i did like about it the most was sort of its visual style like i thought like there was some great production design um uh uh, you mentioned set piece in your review. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that scene where Christopher Abbott's character is sort of like um, enacting the murder that he's yes. planning. And, you know, he's going about the apartment doing all the different gestures and you hear the sound of, you know, a neck snapping or something like that. Like, Yeah, it great was audio creative. design in that beginning. But that's, yeah. that's like the first five minutes, right? Maybe first ten minutes? Pretty early on, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and, and then, like, I think about that stunning moment when he emerges from the bathroom and we kind of get this full shot of him. I don't remember exactly what it is that he's doing, but it's like this long profile take. I'd say it's around 40, 45 seconds. And then we zoom out and we realize we've been watching everything in a mirror. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that was Ooh. just like, what? Like, that. Yeah. moments like that are great. Or when um, the bathroom fills up completely with water. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. oh, this is half the budget. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, some expensive little uh, hallucinations or memories, kind of a hybrid of the two going on in certain in some of those flashbacks, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think that maybe you also like postmodern storytelling more than I do. Um, mm. That's it. It just never really vibes with me. Like just mm. the continual non-commitment towards one singular mm. story. It just keeps kind of interrupting mm. itself. Yeah, I mean. Way. Yeah, story-wise, uh, so you have read the short story, or no? I did. I okay, believe it's Takeshi it. or Takashi Murakami, who is yeah. no relation to Haruki Murakami. The other one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, he is, by his own definition, a postmodernist. Yeah. I mean, story-wise, I was kind of interested in what this was, um, content-wise, what this was. I mean, I was, you know, seeing this mostly as this story of a guy with, um, who's trying to kind of, like, um shed some kind of trauma by, um, you know, planning to murder a prostitute. Um, and it's only kind of through those flashbacks that we get like a third of the way through that we start to kind of get some imagery that might suggest what it is that's driving that, um, desire and what's really, um, uh, what this traumatic history was. It just kind of felt muddled to me. Um, I don't know that it really had sort of the, like, mystery to it that it could have in terms of what was really making him tick he kind of felt he just felt a little vacant to me or a little empty um uh but it's like the style's there i think the content is there it's just a kind of about how they come together it just kind of just didn't leave me with i think that if the content is there like you just said then it isn't in that working version of the screenplay would be oh 100 where i because you can't have such a brief film that's supposed to be so sprawling, mm. but also so tight. Like it's it's almost a one rumor. Yeah, you, you know, and the the thrilling moments are when Mia's stabbing herself in the leg with a knife mm. or the scissors or whatever. It's when um he thinks she's dead. It's when he going to the elevator and thinks he's going to get on and she comes out of the room. Yeah. I was never thrilled with the flashbacks. I was never. Yeah. thrilled with the phone calls yeah. I was never thrilled with the um, callbacks to the baby Yeah, you know yeah. It, it, there's too much room in the sucker it, it's yeah. not airtight yeah yeah, I would agree which is really kind of frustrating because of how much I like these two actors like in a way like I kind of want to spend time with these actors you know in, in practice but, or in theory but um, yeah it's like there's it's what they're given is just a little thin, so it does feel long. It kind um, of reminds me of that film we watched um, from those two, the Zellner brothers. What's that film called? Oh, Damsel. Yeah, 
it, mm. it reminds me of that where it's like I would love to spend more time with Mia Wasikowska's character yeah. there. Yeah. But yeah. not in this film. Like I I want a character piece. I want a, a television show yeah. about this um mentally ill murderous prostitute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, I think it it does sort of <laughs> base its appeal on kind of the use of irony, right? Like he he plans to kill a prostitute, she beats him to it in a way she yes. hurts herself before he even has a chance to tonally and like he there's takes care of her mm-hmm, exactly tonally it's like there's some of this like mundane kind of jazz music that you know is you know contrasted with him practicing strangling somebody um like i think tonally like some some of those moments kind of worked and then there would be these stretches where there's just kind of no feeling at all exactly um, and that's what sucks because when he's smothering himself with chloroform to try to time out how long he stays down from different dosages of chloroform yeah it is like awesome yeah like, okay yeah. this this is the tone of your movie yeah and then it loses its tone for up to 12 minutes at a time yeah and yeah. it goes on psychedelic hallucinations which i would not normally have a problem with but mm-hmm. the budgetary constraints make the CG modeling mm. remove me from the world. And it's yeah. it's like you can only skate by on the excuse that he's hallucinating this so much before yeah. you actually yeah. have to present a, a really good looking thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this, you know, some of that's just, some of it's just personal for me. Some of those hallucinations hallucinations i thought just looked better than others um well that's that's kind of what you just said but i was going to just like point out that creature spider kind of thing that crawled out of the toilet that's specifically what what you were yeah Yeah, specifically that thing yeah it didn't continue to recur yeah i'm like yeah i mean we could maybe kind of you know talk about whatever that is representing in his psyche but i just don't like it's the lecherous heart that is also a leech and you Mm. know desiring it's it's ego it's yeah. It's all things that are useful and also useless or poisonous or, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's um, it's an old motif that, you know, you could see in, in countless stories. And, y- you know, it's something that I think occurs for probably half of the people that I know that had a bad mushroom trip. Yeah. You know, yeah. not exactly that, but that idea. Yeah, yeah. Of the devouring thing that represents your own ego. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, yeah. it just... um. I, I would like to see that director maybe practice more as an art director or a cinematographer on some bigger pieces. Like, I would like yeah. to see him try to be in the, the production B unit of a Spielberg picture to really mm. see how to shoot something big. Because mm. I feel like there's art, there's enough artistry there that if he just gets the reps, like, we're mm. missing, we're missing by him not getting those opportunities, a great artist. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, I definitely think he has talent. Um, one thing Sean Baker talked about in his review on Letterboxd was how he saw this as an homage to Giallo's, an Italian horror. Um, yes, which, I read his review, but don't remember it. So yeah, continue. yeah, that had not crossed my mind at all. Um, I've never when even I was heard of that it. movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forget which one specifically he mentioned. Um and I, I just wasn't really thinking about references like that at all, and I was watching it. But um, in hindsight, I do think that's maybe a more interesting way to look at it, and that probably would give me um, a little more to chew on if I did kind of open myself up to those kinds of connections. Um, you know, we watched uh, the movie The Strange Color of Your Body's Tears mm-hmm. last year, um, and... I think I think stylistically, I, I can very much see sort of the uh, similarity between those kinds of movies. Um, you know, we get the uh, uh, the leather suits and those hallucinations and piercing. I think about those all the crunching leather in those in that director's movies. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a slasher in a way, although the slashing here is sort of ironic. Um, it's postmodern. Yeah, the deep red uh, carpeting of um, Mia's apartment, or that's not her name in the movie, that's the actress, but um, yeah, I mean, stylistically, I thought that was kind of interesting that that's maybe the reference point, Um, but it didn't give me, I obviously was not, um, you know, conscious of it during the viewing. It didn't make itself known, and it wasn't a good enough homage to merit its own worth, maybe. 
Yeah, yeah, as a self-contained work, probably weaker. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're getting at. But uh, both performers are really good. Yeah, for sure. Not their fault. Uh, if there was a super cut of them performing, great. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, I could have done without this movie and had him on a better movie set. Yeah. In personally. theory, it's a good movie. In practice, it's not. I'd rather rewatch <laughs> The uh, Reporter three minutes in Vox Lux, if I'm being honest, than watch this movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great scene. Yeah. He's just got yeah. more to do there. Yeah. That's piercing. Moving on. What do we got next? Well, how do you feel about Monsters and Men? Monsters and Men. Let's do it. Cities are going to keep burning. Gonna keep getting shot. You're under arrest. I didn't do nothing. And cops are gonna keep getting off. But you have a ticket out. You have no idea. You don't have a clue of what goes on on the streets. You see three minutes of a shaky video and you think you know what you do. This movie I thought was a stunning work that was incredible for the first half. Oh, interesting. I could not believe how clear the cinematography was and I. I didn't have a grasp of how he was going to use these timelines. And mm. I was really eager to see him sew it all together. So mm. I was really riding high. Mm. And then the last half of that movie, he just undercut himself at every possible opportunity that he had. You were hoping like the timelines were actually going to converge? <clears throat> or you just mean I was like, hoping the characters would actually converge. Oh, uh, much, yeah. much like we see in the uh, television series on Showtime, The Chai. Um, there are separate individuals. There is a cop who appears to be... He, he is a white cop instead of the Washington's African-American cop. But there's a white cop in the Chai who seems to be a villain, but then goes on to endear himself and actually try to do the right thing in the face of all this police tyranny. Mm. While there are um, African-American kids in the Chai who are trying to not deal drugs, who um, mm. do have to brandish a weapon because they have to take care of someone they care about because mm. of the reality of the street level truth of what it's like to interact in this world. Yeah. And I thought that that's maybe where we were going. Mm. But instead, we just went towards basically the idea of taking a knee. Oh, interesting. Right? That's how with it is. With the baseball player? Yeah, he takes a knee with a yeah. t-shirt on. I guess I remember him jogging out onto the field. I can't remember if he took a knee or not. I yeah, he jogs out on the field, takes a knee. I don't think he does. You Are you sure? I'm positive. Okay. Yeah, because okay. it, that's what he's doing. He's waiting to compete. Yeah. So it's not yeah. like it's not like he is taking a knee the way that mm. Colin Kaepernick or Eric Reed did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he is jogging out on the field in line with the other people that are about to compete with yeah. that t-shirt on. I don't remember yeah. the fellow's name. And he takes a knee. Oh, I don't even remember that. Okay. And, it, and it dissolves, if I remember mm. correctly. That's exactly how it ends. And it, it's kind of like um, a shout in the darkness, maybe, is what the goal mm. is. To like say that it's it's everyone taking a knee and it, that it all stacks up or whatever. Mm. But it just undercut what was really, really convincing me about the police brutality and the mm. truth of what it's like to be a police officer who is risking your life every day, who is encountering things, not knowing who's carrying, not knowing when the next shot is going to be delivered in under a second. Yeah. Um, which was really well conveyed between Denzel Washington, or not Denzel, sorry. The other one, his son. His son. What's his son's name? John David Washington. John David Washington. Between John David Washington and um, the um, the fellow who gets arrested for yes. dealing uh, weapons, who I is friends with the fellow who gets yeah. murdered. And it, it just seemed like it was so exciting, so yeah. tight knit. The cinematography was so good. Mm. It was like some of the best cinematography I'd seen since End of Watch. Oh, interesting. And then just nothing. Like it just mm. fell. That's and interesting. I was so, so bummed out. Yeah. So yeah, you you came out a little more negative, I think, than I realized. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. I think I was actually more positive. Um, I think I did very much like getting three different perspectives. I think. For me, I did see these three guys as each going through something very similar, but I think this sort of triptych structure provided some nice variation. I was—I mean, I was very nervous going into this that this with with a story like this that it's just going to kind of pander to. So you knew what the story was. 
I knew that there was a police shooting and people react. Oh, okay. I, knew that I had no much. idea. I just knew it was called okay. Monsters and Men and had Denzel's son. Okay. Oh, you were blind. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I just thought it was a cop movie. Yeah. When we went yeah. like 30 minutes without John David, I was like, what the fuck like, what's is going, going on? on? Who's this guy? Exactly. <laughs> and and that's why, I because I knew so little, I had these moments of elation. Mm. Yeah. And then it's just under cut. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was a little nervous that it might just kind of try to pander to like our sense of outrage over, you know, an event like this that we are now very well accustomed to. Um, and I think I did very much sort of connect with the idea that each of these guys are sort of wrestling with sort of conflicting values and their sense of identity in the wake of this tragedy. Um, the John David Washington chapter was definitely my favorite. And I think I liked that that segment was a little inconclusive like I just see him as um becoming more aware of what he sees as racial injustice and how that kind of conflicts with his just allegiance to the force and how his identity is kind of wrapped up in being a cop um like I, I feel like that tension was pretty interesting and I think that's really all John David Washington just I just kind of saw that on his face like he's like I, I I cannot reconcile these things. I absolutely agree. That yeah. it was so exciting to watch because Great once stuff. he'd drive past the basketball court and he'd yeah. look over and we didn't already I think the first time it happens we haven't seen him play basketball with those kids yet. Yes. And he looks over and there's like this sense of longing but also the, a clear sense of separation because of the way that the camera is used. I they do two different types of shots with the moving camera where the camera is static within a vehicle mm. so that the characters are static and then the background moves mm. or they do it so that the background is static and the characters are moving in the world mm. in the vehicle yeah and it just really um visually symbolized whatever deeper truths might exist about mm. what you were just talking about about yeah. him being in a world that sees things in one way and he has to navigate around in it yeah and then he also has to be a police officer who has to be a static thing. And yeah. the world moves around and he has to be this one thing. Yeah. And uh, it just, it, visually, it was really, really interesting and fascinating yeah. to contend with. Yeah, yeah. And with the ending, I think I completely agree. It's just that maybe, like, it didn't take it down as much for me as you, even though, like, I think I'm agreeing. No, it's not like um, that ending. It's just, yeah. I thought that ending was kind of a weak ending for how strong mm. the beginning was. Like, it, yeah. I didn't feel like it made a clear, concise statement. Didn't quite stick to um, the landing. But it's the last half of the entire film where mm. I realized that, like, the triptych isn't going to come together. Mm. They were already connected by this person who's dead, and that's the entire rap bow on mm. how they're all involved with each other. Mm. And, yeah. and that there yeah. was no cohesion. And that might just be my own bias towards that I like a cohesive Convergence. narrative yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but that that's definitely what bothered me yeah yeah that makes sense I th yeah I think for me the idea that they're each kind of having having a similar kind of emotional turmoil was enough of kind of like the thematic connective tissue even though like the plot didn't quite um, come together um, but yeah I would agree with with the the very ending what I liked about the John David Washington segment was that there was sort of an inconclusiveness to it like he doesn't mm -hmm. just show up at a rally and say you know this is what I stand for now or say I'm a cop um, it just kind of ends and I think that's that kind of gives me more to think about like what he might go on to do um, which value might rule out I just think that's more that feels more real to me than something really kind of black and white um, I, I think agree the uh the punctuation of him going on the field at the very end whether he kneels or not i'm still not sure he kneels although it's kind of beside the point it just feels like a little more um a little bit more of a heavy-handed cap on it um which is just a little less uh effective for me um but yeah i would agree the cinematography i think was great and that just that goes a long way it, it re man that first half the cinematography in the first half I, I watched um a quarter of the first half on my phone um at the gym and then I watched ah. another quarter at home and then another I, I kind of split it up I think I watched it over two days yeah um in quarters and it really let me focus in on stuff but that cinematography really translates digitally 
like mm. beautifully. I, I think that the more that we move towards people watching things in different settings than the home theater setting, mm. um, the more this digital photography is really going to voice itself on like how, mm. how there's certain things that maybe you should watch on your phone or your iPad or your tablet or yeah. your, your, even your laptop, mm. you know? And I, I think that this might be one of those things where if you do want to watch it, seek it out digitally, see, seek it out mm. on a smaller device and just let, let yourself experience it in that way. And then, mm put it on the big screen if you have that opportunity to translate yeah i will always treasure the theatrical experience but i think that's a fair you case. will you do like to turn off the I lights do. and watch it without any interruptions i do like oh, a lunatic <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you heard it here first he's gonna watch leaving neverland in one sitting for four hours oh, my butt hurts already <laughs> <laughs> um what else is i gonna say oh the only kind of um weakness that uh that kind of stuck out to me was i think this was at its best for me when it was sort of concentrated on each of these characters specific experiences and it struggled a little bit when it was exploring how they kind of relate to the people in their world like the first guy who we really haven't talked about who's struggling whether or not to to he can't decide whether or not to post this video of the shooting yes and he's sitting on the couch with his girlfriend, wife, and, you know, she's saying, we have a baby on the way, you're about to get a job, don't blow this. Um, similarly, in the third chapter, the baseball player has a conversation with his coach, where the coach says, there are going to be a lot of scouts at the game, um, you got to be on your best behavior. To me, this is maybe just some of the, the debut experience talking, where some of that dialogue announces itself as meant to explain to me what the stakes are and it doesn't necessarily ring true of but, like just... but do you see that they're linked to john david's character as well each of those um, characters because the fellow who was looking for the job was applying to be a security officer mm -hmm. um on his way to a police career that was his goal to become a policeman uh the first guy was yeah oh i don't think i realized that yeah he because he, he was working towards security and then um mm. i think there's paperwork and a, mm. a small discussion with his wife about when he will be qualified to take the next test for the police academy exams. Mm. Um, mm. And then the um, the end uh, fellow who is doing the baseball, um, I, I think that he, being told by that coach, mm. like what the stakes are, very much repeats John David Washington's character. Being mm. told uh, from that partner, I think she's a female, um, yeah, yeah. not to step on anyone's toes or say anything bad about the other officers who had shot yeah. the fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the, the the symmetry of those conversations is spot on. I think it's maybe just kind of word choice and delivery and that kind of thing where I just always kind of felt like this. it was, it, was, it, it kind of stuck out to me as lines intended to explain to me what the stakes were. Whereas I kind of felt like the characters mm -hmm. already knew the stakes. Gotcha. Um, so you thought the characters but, were more fleshed out than the dialogue. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but it's a nit, you know. Yeah. That well, stuff I mean, it, make yeah, or break he's it. a debut filmmaker. Yeah. I'm excited to see what he does next. Um, I definitely think that he should be working on that writing, though, because mm -hmm. there is a great strength to the beginning of this. And I, I would like to see something more punchy, maybe something more pulpy in genre from him. Yeah, yeah. Because he's got a clear de way of depicting real world characters. I yeah. want to see those real world characters really do something. Yeah. Like really yeah. do something. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of interesting in comparison to what we just talked about with Piercing, where we like these actors and we feel like the director didn't really get the best out of them. Here, I think, like, this guy recognizes that, like, John David Washington can do something let me just shoot him and let him let him work yeah um, and that's great like sometimes the director needs to know when to let let a performer carry it yeah let yeah. let john clench his jaw muscle yes let nice him jaw furrow line. his brow let him um try to hold his composure at dinner with yes. with people uh complaining scene. about him being a police officer it's good yeah 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 i thought this was kind of an interesting counterpoint to his role in Black Klansman, where he's mm -hmm. also playing a cop, and um, there, uh, you know, just just to kind of uh, think about how those characters 
um, identify as police officers in very different ways. Um, yeah. Kind of an interesting year for him. I think I gave this one a three. What'd you give it? Three. Three? Nice. Yep. Good pick. I'm glad we watched it, and I hope too. John David has more work for us soon. Word. So we're on to Destroyer. Destroyer. Or Thunder Road. Which oh. one do you want to talk about? Oh, you duped me there. Yep. Um, let's do Thunder Road. Just lighten it up for a moment. Jim Cummings. Yes. Writer, director, performer. Yes. Savant. Genius. Whoa. The next Jim Carrey. Ooh, that's interesting. Jim Cummings. You're drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm angry. I realize that. I'm going, no, calm down. I lost my daughter today. For what? So I could impress you. I gave up my family. And the rest of it. What, you want my pants too? Fine. You can keep them. I don't care. You can't hurt me. You think you're hurting me? I found out she lost her boyfriend in Vietnam. I never asked her about it. I never made the time. I was selfish. I like this movie a lot. I really like this movie. I gave it a three and a half. I think you gave it a four. Yeah, it was, um, once again, the line between, uh, what is it, 74 or 76? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, it's a 76, definitely. There you go. It's yeah. just a performance piece. Yeah. And yeah. when, um, this is actually a movie where when I saw the credits, which are a repeat of the intro, mm. it triggered something in me where I, I realized the entire statement that Jim was trying to make with his story mm. and that really just pushed it over the edge for me where it was mm. like a whole another half a star mm. because he not only wrote a story he wrote a story that uses the beginning again at the end in context of the story mm. to really bring about the statement that he wanted to make with his narrative mm. and it was just beautiful what do you think that statement was? you want to take a stab um, at it? It's it's just the frolicking absurdity of life and trying to find mm. joy in it the um yeah. the scene that i'm talking about is when his mother dies yeah the stereo won't turn on to play the song that obviously the film cannot afford to have in it mm -hmm. um and the titular song thunder road yeah right yeah and then he proceeds to do the dance that he came up for came up with for the song in front of everyone in silence yeah and that is played again at the end of the film. Mm -hmm. I think with a song that time. I can't remember. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, yeah. And we've learned that the mother owned a, a dance school. Yes. That he was bad at dancing, but mm -hmm. um, that his mother loved it. That he was the only sibling who didn't want to sell it. Then he was forced to sell it um, to try to keep his daughter then he gets to keep his daughter anyways and the cost of that is really sad and tragic yeah. much like life and he's just it's just a a special piece i wouldn't call this a film mm. i would I, I mean it is but like if i was talking about it, i'd be like it's a piece of art mm. like, like if if you wanted to look at this piece of art in the museum i would recommend this piece of art yeah you know yeah. it's very much a performance work of art yeah. rather than yeah. what I would call a film or a movie. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Um, yeah, it's, it's so strange how I'm constantly kind of on the verge of both laughing and crying. It just straddles that line between um, comedy and tragedy in each and every kind constantly. of beat. Um, one guy I, I follow on, tw uh, not Twitter, Letterbox, Jack Moulton, um, quoted Charlie Chaplin and I think the line something like um, comedy is drama in wide shot or something like mm -hmm. that or in close up life is a tragedy and um, from far away it's a drama or yeah. something like that or the other way around um, and you know each and every kind of scene here he's starting with those zooms and he slowly zooms in on these characters and at first from distance like you're kind of watching this as kind of this absurdist piece and you're laughing and as you get closer to him and you're forced to kind of like look in his eyes like 
it the tragedy starts to sink in and tonally like it's just this weird kind of blend of comedy and 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 pathos and i i can't really compare it to anything um that tone just feels so unique um it it feels very much like some of jim carrey's best work man on the moon yeah. that type of stuff yeah i'm yeah i'm not as familiar with jim carrey's like body of work but that's interesting i think that's his that's his kind of style he, yeah i think that that both these gyms can truly put yeah. on the mask of um sorrow drama comedy absurdism mm. whatever they have to do and as long as they're not bothered by the realities of the world they can truly become a character for a little bit yeah and i think that we, we've certainly seen that with the andy kaufman piece that he did um, mm. there's the documentary about it because it became so absurd. Um, you, we see tendencies of Joaquin Phoenix trying to do this with don't worry, he'll mm. get far on foot. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Jim Cummings has that, you get, what is it, maybe a six-minute take at the beginning of this funeral procession. Yeah. It, it could even be 11 minutes. I can't remember what the short film said because I think that there's a specific short film called Thunder Road as well mm. that he'd released previously. And he does it all in one take. Mm, yeah, and yeah. the translation of emotions from the fact that the CD player batteries that he thought that he replaced that he couldn't replace and interacting with the funeral procession and trying to comfort his daughter and then doing the dance while also giving the speech and having the emotional breakdown and at the beginning he's called up from the pew like there's just so much yeah. in that yeah. single take that he has to wear and translate and go through Yeah, it's just special yeah yeah it works really well as a whole and there are just plenty of great moments um i loved him playing that little hand clapping game with his daughter yes and then i've seen that he's been practicing overnight and uh-huh. he nails it just just so funny sweet and funny at the same time because um, it shows how much he cares because yeah. at that point in the story we really are like do you want her for ego or do you love her yeah and then he shows us like he really loves her and he's just this weird guy yeah yeah um, and he's a weird guy. <laughs> he is. He is. He's an oddball. <laughs> um, we already joked via text about this scene in the classroom. Probably my favorite scene. Um, I love, I think it's Macon Blair, who's the other actor, just uh, yes, subtly yes. pulling the scissors off the table after he has a <laughs> fiasco. Just a great little visual gag. Um, there's all kinds of stuff like that. Oh, it was man. great. Uh, I, I think that there's even a scene that kind of boils down the entire movie, which is, mm. you know, daring to say. But he's been fired by the police department, mm-hmm. is driving in his truck, mm-hmm. is pulled over by a police officer, gets out of the truck, closes the door with the keys in, and it's locked. And the police officer <laughs> pulled him over to tell him to check his phone. Uh-huh. And now he can't get to his phone, and he's trying to break the window open with his elbow, and it won't yeah. break. And then the guy goes back to his car to try to figure it out, and he he just gets the address. Mm. And then Jim starts freaking out, mm-hmm. takes the billy club, starts hitting it. Nothing happens. He has to screw off the end cap for the window shatter part. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what he says, but the way that he says it's just hilarious. He breaks it open and gets his phone and arrives at the address in yeah. which we find the mother of his daughter yeah Odeed. yeah that kind of is the movie <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it's so fascinating to me how i'm i'm laughing during these scenes but i don't feel like i'm laughing at him no nor do I feel like I'm laughing with him because he's not laughing. Yeah, you're like laughing um, at reality. It, yeah, it's just the absurdity of life. Just like you said. I'm just taking your words now. You already said it. <laughs> um, yeah, he is looking at a corpse that should be just horrifying and he proceeds to slap the corpse. Yes. Great, great touch. And he says um, that's for, what, her his daughter's future husband? Yeah. 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 Um, And just, like, thinking of the way that that mind works, like, because he's... The words that he's saying show that this character is actually really thought out. Yeah. And that's what, like, keeps me off guard, is, like, every single thing that seems absurd or terrible, the dialogue speaks a truth to it that makes it, while absurd, real. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, 
what was I about to say? Oh, yeah, just the uh, the idea that, you know, this movie starts with him losing his mom and ends with his daughter losing her mom. Mm-hmm. Um, man, there's nothing funny about that. Um, no, but and, I, I mean, uh, we, in the middle, we go see his sister, who's yeah, also a mother, yeah. and she's having kind of an emotional breakdown while yeah. trying to keep it all together. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really kind of feel like I've underestimated this movie. Um, like my rating was maybe just because like it just kind of maybe took me a while to kind of find its wavelength. Um, and it, it's like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, like I just I can't really find any any other like good kind of like reference point because this feels just so kind of distinct. Um, and uh, yeah, I watched one of his shorts when I had heard this was getting good reviews, and I saw um, that you watched one of them. Gave it a one and a half. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't like it, and I think it was maybe the same problem where, um, especially just not knowing kind of like what this tone was going to be. Like, I just didn't get it on its wave like kind of fast enough. But in a feature, like it eventually kind of just clicked. I'm like, okay, this is kind of like a cringe comedy kind of thing, um, or and absurd realism. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just slow on the uptake totally with this because it is yeah. so kind of fresh to me in a in a good way. Well, I, I um, mean, realistically, you you aren't spending that much time personally in what you watch in the comedy realms. True, very true. You, you know, so it it might not be on you. It just might be yeah. like you haven't built up the flavor taste of yeah. of how to know which which part of your palate is even tasting sage to yes. begin with. You just know yes. it tastes like green. Yes, <laughs> great point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's one that that's only I think grown in my estimation and just appreciation for it as I've thought about it um, and just kind of the conflict of emotions I felt while watching it and had fun. Yeah, yeah, it's I, good stuff. It's a it's a beautiful piece. Mm-hmm. It is a film, but it doesn't feel like a film to me as much as we are talking about movies and film on this podcast. Yeah. It is an art piece, and if you want to watch a piece of art that is daring and tragic and um, hard to watch and difficult to stomach Thunder Road will be a road you should travel yes leave it at that well said I know your whole story placing our agent undercover she'll look right enough next to our guy if we do this we accept the consequences do you love me you know I do Nicole Kidman Destroyer That's right Karen Kusama's latest film What'd you think? I Think this is a really good movie I don't particularly Like it And I mean that with respect The same Mm. way that I mean that with respect about um, Yorgos Lanthimos' The Killing of a Sacred Deer Mm. I I viscerally hated that movie Mm. And uh, I mean that like he got me to hate the movie good for him Mm. I have a strong reaction about a work of art that he created that's on him I don't have as strong of a reaction about Destroyer as I'm talking about but I really appreciate it Mm -hmm. and it almost feels like liking it but I don't like anything about it because it's so Mm. real so raw so hard so brutal yeah so sad when she lifts her shirt and we see those bruised ribs that she's walking Ooh, yeah. around with that are cle- she's clearly got internal bleeding going on there. Oh yeah. Um, it looks what not she's good. dealing with with her daughter and the um the relationship that her daughter has with that terrible boy and um, Oh yeah. But then there's moments with Scoot McNary where it's like, "Yay, mm. Scoot McNary." Or um the way that she manipulates the timeline so that the beginning and the end are the same thing and uh, the boy finally landing the kickflip is how we go out. Like there's certain things mm. that I do really love about this, but the content is just so hard. Tatiana Maslany is this hardened, Ooh, yeah, um, drug criminal. Yeah, yeah. When we have such a flawed protagonist or anti-hero, Scoot McNary really is a relief when he, he shows up. He's always a relief. He is one of the greatest character actors working yeah. today. He's totally new to me as a, as of the last like month because we watched this and uh, True Detective. Yeah. Um, great I, I really like him um tune into fargo and godless you'll only be more oh, impressed okay. and if you have the balls halt and mm. catch fire three seasons oh, so he's, he's a tv awesomeness. staple yeah yeah um yeah i mean i think he he's a strong supporting character here 
Um, I thought Nicole Kidman was great. Um, I thought the makeup job, we talked about that a little bit right after the movie, was just was just great. I feel like sometimes um, talk about makeup is confused with just, like, who got the most makeup. I don't think it's really lathered on here. It just really sort of... Um, Even if it is, you can't yeah. tell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She, she just looks um, tired and uh, full of despair. Um, and I think that contrasted with what she looks like when she's young, which is like just so full of life and kind of vitality, even though she's with some not so great people. I think that that contrast is not just wildly apparent, but very effective. Yes. Um, I think the look just feels right. Um, I think it's just a beautifully shot movie. I think it looks great. I thought the cinematography was great. Um, they really welcomed those lens flares, which I thought looked good. Um, you know, when I think about a lens flare as kind of an imperfection in the in the cinematography, I think that just kind of fits with uh, a very imperfect protagonist. Um, many imperfect people here, obviously. Um, and uh, the locations always just felt so lived in, you know, whether it's... Um, you know, like the clubhouse kind of thing where the, the gang's hanging out, um, where Nicole Kidman is staying, they all just look so grungy and just kind of like everyone's living in squalor. I don't know. It just felt uh, very authentic. Even Tatiana Maslany's apartment. Oh, right? yeah. The, um, the storage locker. Yeah. Where the Nicole's money is kept. Um, yeah. And, and then Nicole's car herself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I was surprised kind of just sifting through letterbox at how a lot of people were not so crazy about the structure and kind of the, uh, you know, surprise. Um, I guess it's, I don't know if I'd call it a twist, but there is sort of a structural I think surprise. It's a twist, personally. Think it's a twist. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was daring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought it was great. I don't, I, some people described it as messy. I didn't feel that way at all. That, that really surprised me. No, I was always um, flying by the seat of my pants. I was, it's a movie that constantly pulls you forward. Yeah, and yeah. by doing that, you never have the chance to think through what is the timeline here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You're always, um, yeah, in the moment. Yeah, and and I mean, that's that's the power of Karen Kusama's filmmaking more than mm. anything, because you and I both should have thought as soon as the first cut where she's limping towards the dead body, mm. when she's no longer limping, maybe we do a flashback, but then go back to her. How, however, she does that, she uses film alchemy to make us mm -hmm. stop thinking about the fact that Nicole should be limping. Yep. And so it's on us for not even noticing. Yep. So anyone that that's taken by that or finds a problem with that, that just really means that they didn't notice either because Karen Kusama yeah. did her job so well. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to make you totally forget about it. And exactly. I'm going to show you this again. It's the art Done. of alchemy, magicianry. Yeah. You, you know, it's, it's, it's a truly great film. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, you know, I think it, you know, I mean, I haven't seen that many noirs, but I, I think TV's maybe done a better job of putting women in, um, a role like this. And I just love that this movie is really not about, um, representation with a capital R. Like it just kind of benefits from that, from that change. I just don't think this would be what it is if, um, if there was a dude in that role. I just think I, that I know what that kind of feels like. Yeah, no, it would change um, the flavor of the entire thing, right? Because yeah. when she has Tatiana Maslany in custody, quote unquote, yeah. Yeah. that has a tone that would not be repeated if there was a male in, in that role, no matter the sexuality of the male. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The relationship with uh, Nicole and her daughter Yeah. It does not matter what... Um, you you put if you take Nicole out of that role if you if you take a strong female out of that role that mothering role mm -hmm. and change it to a father role it just doesn't work yeah yeah I it, agree. it loses its tone and it's not like it's got this strong feminine tone but it has this brutal tone that just is feminine yeah it's it's very much the idea of Athena breaking herself out of Zeus's mm. head it is just the tr it's the bloody truth damn it yeah yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've just seen so many male detectives in noirs, you know, kind of on the on the the hunt for clues, looking, you know, going from suspect to suspect, like she is trying to find this one particular dude, and 
you know we're not used to seeing a protagonist who has to give somebody a hand job to to get information out or of spit them. on her hand while she's giving the yeah. hand job or yeah. uh pick up what is she she goes to her trunk while a bank robbery is in process and takes out a, a submachine gun and two clips and then um enters and mm-hmm. gives chase oh, yeah. uh tackles and brutally fist fights tatiana maslani in the middle of an ice cream parlor i believe oh, yeah. or perhaps a frozen yogurt oh yeah yeah you know yeah it's, oh yeah it's such a good scene because after we've only been in these really kind of grungy locations now we're kind of in this yuppie froyo la joint um and there is they look so out of place it's, that, that i thought that that was perfect um yeah, I uh, I feel like this maybe got a little lost last year. I don't know about you, based on who you follow on Letterbox, if you saw other people giving it positive reviews. But well, um, the thing that I would say is it's the same as Hostiles. Mm, it came out state. on December 29th in two cities, New York and L.A., and then yeah. it came out in January for or February for you know everyone else. Yeah, and yeah. everyone else is people that have access to AMC classics. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think I saw a regal that showed it. So unless you have yeah. an art house theater airing it, you know you're just not going to see it until it's on VOD. Yeah, yeah, which is uh, surprising to me because I think it is very artful. But I think this has broad appeal. I mean, I I can see maybe not, maybe that's not the right word. It's not maybe not broad, but it's not. I don't call this art house exactly. It kind of feels like At Eternity's Gate to me, where it's like, oh, this is a great mm-hmm. movie that should be seen by as many people as want to see it like that's how yeah. the story feels this is a great movie that should be seen as by as many people as want to see it yeah but how many people want to see nicole kidman with internal bleeding uh murdering people and you know watching her uh soon to be love get murdered who is the father of her child yeah sebastian yeah. stan we haven't talked about he's great very good yeah oh man i mean that just that relationship could have been depicted in such a heavy-handed fashion and that were kind of allowed to just connect the dots and how they fell in love and how what they mean to each other. Glances I mean, and whispers. Is oh, how it's told. huge! Oh, I, that was just I thought that was just just perfect. Um, and yeah, he's great. Um, he does a lot with a little. He doesn't even have that much dialogue. <laughs> um, really, nothing like momentous. It's all kind of just purely for the purpose of whatever situation they're in. Yeah, there's no big proclamation. I don't know. Maybe they maybe they say I love you at some point. But they probably do, but it never uh, felt well, they larger have a, than life. They have the interaction where she talks him into going through with the job so mm-hmm. that they can have their life. That's the yeah. big talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Otherwise, you know, the biggest moment is when he goes back in, takes his mask off, looks at her. Yeah. And then yeah. goes in. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I thought he was great. Um, I haven't seen him in. That much else that I really liked, I thought he was just 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 perfect here, and I, I really believed in their chemistry. And the, not a big and, fan of Itania, is that what you're saying? Hot oh, take. I forgot about that actually. Good point. I did okay. like him in Itania, um, but uh, particularly good here, um, as is uh, I think most everyone. Um, I don't know who the guy is who played that uh, primary villain, villain yeah. but uh, I thought it was pretty good. I, great antagonist yeah, yeah great job and when he takes when he when we find out that he's got a shaved head and then he takes that wig mm. off at some point i was like oh, oh yeah. shit is that even like he looked just so weathered for a loop. Yeah. yeah yeah he looked like he had seen better days i think uh another thing is nicole kidman's makeup job here and like her performance mm. i think is as deserving of an award as christian bale's vice mm. role. like yeah if we're going to talk about the prestige makeup transformative mm. roles, those two were on the same level last year. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I would completely agree. I, I don't know that I would move Claire down from being mm. my favorite, but I, I will say that I think Nicole deserves to almost be as good as Claire was. Well, yeah. I'm, you've, you've seen the wife, correct? Correct. So you've seen, I think you've seen all the movies. You, you have most definitely seen all the movies. Uh, for in the best actress category, would, would you would you demote any of them for Nicole Kidman here? Absolutely, yeah. The wife, unfortunately, is not a rich screenplay. Yeah, and is very uninteresting. And while she gives a notable performance, she does mm-hmm. not give a performance that would make me think that she should be nominated above Emma Stone for the favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let alone Nicole Kidman for Destroyer or Claire Foy for Unsane or yeah, you know, name a 
female-led film and you know pretty good year like, oceans eight i could think about two different roles that yeah. i'd rather see yeah you know good year anything else or shall we uh wrap it up um well we should probably wrap it up and i'll also break some yeah. news to you uh-oh bruno gantz just died mm. what 77 really? years old no way how do you feel about being wow. down on the house the jackpot uh, now don't do that you to son me of a jerk. god <laughs> he was perfect in that role how he was that? a saint <laughs> he was the greatest hitler we ever had wow that's sad just today just today i saw it this morning on the wow. uh, accounts twitter they say what was he was he ill i didn't look mm. it's just sad it's enough it's enough sadness well, I hope it took him by surprise and he was happy when he went. To Bruno Gantz. To Cheers. Bruno Gantz. I'd pour one out on the ground if I could. I'm not stopping you. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! We have to go. I'm coming with you. That was brilliant.